Hey way everyone, Pufu here, and in this 5 part series, we're breaking down everything a player needs to know about Splatoon 3. In this video, we'll be going over Volume 1 of 5 of A Splatlandian's Guide to Splatoon. Volume 1, Surviving the Splatlands, explains how to not suck at the game. It covers everything from mistakes you'll make and how to avoid them, ways to improve as a player and teammate, and some tips and tricks right out of Twitter. So enough with the blabber, let's get right on in. Chapter 1, How to Not Suck Like an Ink Back Beginner or not, you're going to meet a lot of tough enemies in your path. And the only way to stay on top of that is to absolutely avoid these mistakes. We're firing them in quick succession, so get ready. Number 1, Rushing into things too quick and being unaware One of the biggest mistakes a player can make is to rush into mid or the objective without being aware of their surroundings. The UI exists for a reason. It gives you so much valuable information that can help you assess your team's current situation. Aspects like who has their special ready and the ratio of alive to splatted players will tell you when pushing is most optimal. Running into the zone solo while your four other opponents are still alive and inking is a horrible idea. You're asking to be splatted, which in turn causes you to lose valuable time and your special gauge. By taking those three seconds to analyze an area, you just saved yourself a five second respawn time. Every second matters in Splatoon, so, you know, don't waste them. Number two, being way too predictable. This usually applies to beginner players, but the general rule of thumb is to never let your enemies know your next move. Which sounds easier said than done, but with an arsenal of movement options, be sure to use them to your fullest. Practice different combinations of substrafing and squid rolling which can form maneuvers that let you roll forward while deflecting ink to a certain degree. By being unpredictable, you make it harder for your opponents to read your movement, giving you the upper hand on combat situations. Diversifying how you approach and attack is vital, so don't be like little Timmy running in a straight line holding down ZR. Swiggle your swims, rotate your runs, and adjust your aim. For a more in-depth look at movement options and controls, check out these great videos by other fellow Splattubers. I'll leave their links in the description below. Whoa, 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 wait, just a moment. Before we dive into Chapter 2, be sure to sub the channel so you'll never miss out on future guides. Okay, back to it. Number 3. Not crabbing a snack. <laughs> See what I did there? Sometimes you just want to jump right into the game, and most players forget to snack on something beforehand, and I don't blame you, but if you got food tickets, use them. Maybe it's just me, or perhaps you can relate to this, but I have a terrible habit of hoarding all my food tickets and never touching them. So head on by the concession stand and grab something like a crab trap sandwich, or the pesca- pescariot? Royal? I'm not even gonna try. But my point is, make grinding the game easier on yourself. The first week of Splatoon 3's launch will be the most time you spend playing this game, so you might as well apply those experience and cash boosts while you play extensively. It makes getting new weapons and expanding your wardrobe less of a hassle. Don't just super jump willy nilly though, that's a guaranteed KO. And don't show up to a team push late either. When your team needs your help, you need to be there. So if you're acting as your team slayer, be sure to scout out some safe spots located near the main objective, like any anchor players on deck. Specials like the Big Bubbler have beacons built in, so jumping to one of those is 99% safe since you'll be protected by a shield. And obviously, speaking of beacons, be sure to use them. If a teammate of yours strategically placed them near areas where flanking can occur, make sure you consider that into your next course of action. But let's say your team ends up in a pickle and you can't escape spawn because of... <gasps> Spawn campers? Well, luckily spawn drones can shoot you onto inaccessible areas your opponents can't reach. Like in Eeltail Alley, there's a whole platform located above the stage that'll keep you safe. So use that free range that you have to launch yourself ahead of danger. But in the case that you have to face head on, you still have a few seconds of invincibility after launching yourself. So be sure to attack as soon as you land.
Chapter 2, Splatoon fans on Twitter know everything, even spoilers. <laughs> so I sorta asked Twitter for advice to give to new and existing players, and here's what everyone said. And you can also pause the video to give these comments a more in-depth read, by the way. So in our first batch of tips, a lot of players recommended studying the range of different weapons. By knowing how far something reaches, you can plan an attack or withdrawal accordingly. Also by jumping, you can extend the range of certain weapons like brushes or rulers, so that's neat to know. Here's another really important tip, you must booyah back! If you don't, you will either look like an IGN employee who got a review copy of the game and gave it a lower rating than its predecessors, or people who will think you're a sweat that cannot spare two seconds to smash the D-pad. I don't make up the rules, I'm just telling you how to avoid being an absolute embarrassment. Moving on. Abilities are super important. Although fashion is more superior than function in my opinion, you still need to wear the right stat boost to excel in battle. But that doesn't mean you should be stacking one ability only. Newer players might not know that abilities do indeed have diminishing returns, so a variety of abilities are key in this sense. Next up, movement and aiming. Like I said earlier, don't be like little Timmy. Instead, put some variety into your playstyle. That way, people won't be able to outsmart your game. And of course, read up on the in-game guides if you're absolutely clueless on anything. And last tip, before we move over to chapter 3, play the way you want to play. Using the meta weapon may be tempting, and yeah, it works. But don't let that discourage you from using what suits your playstyle. After all, it's better to choose something fun to play instead of choosing it based on a tier list. There's more Twitter tips after chapter 3, so stick around for that if you want more advice from fellow Splat tweeters. But up next... Chapter 3, Being a Better Team Player Being a good teammate isn't just about getting the most splats or how good your KDA ratio was. I mean, yeah, they do matter, but the truth is, winning Splatoon requires team effort. So here are some tips you're gonna wanna know. You need to watch your teammates back. I see this happen way too many times, but when you see a teammate super jump to you, stay there for a quick sec to make sure they land safely. That means inking the area they land at and making sure ambushes don't happen. Having backup is better than having none. Also, less special depletion for the entirety of the team equating to more special outputs, so you know, you should probably make sure your teammate doesn't die when they land. Another important tip is to pay attention to your teammate's cue. This especially applies to modes like Clan Blitz or Salmon Run. Like if someone is spamming this way, maybe try not to ignore that because it probably means that your teammate wants you to come over to them because they either found a really good flanking spot or an opening if they're the super clan. And most importantly, based on the weapons you brought into battle, you should understand what role your team expects of you. Like, no, you're not going to engage in the front lines with an E-leader, and you should not be painting with something like a blaster. Every weapon has a designated playstyle that is considered when making their kits, so to go against that puts you at a disadvantage, unless you're skilled enough. But when you walk into battle, understand your role because everyone else will depend on you to fulfill your team's responsibility as a slayer, support, or backliner. A successful team clicks when people don't step on each other's toes. And one last tip, don't always put the blame on your team. Everyone has something they need to improve at, and we've all been a beginner, so improve yourself first before you throw a fit over losing. I understand stakes are on the line, especially in ranked, and who doesn't want to beat their all-time record, but losing makes winning a thousand times better. So at the end of the day, just take it easy on yourself and just have fun. Chapter 4, Splatoon JP Jump Scare. Nah, I'm, I'm kidding. I, I just have some more tips from Twitter to share with the class. So this one's a bit of a mixed bag. Should you stick with one weapon or master multiple? Well, you tell me in the comments, but in my opinion, it never hurts to try out several weapons before choosing one to main. By having a basic understanding of different weapons, you could figure out ways to counter them. However, before you master a variety of weapons, aim to master at least one first. And for controls, whether you decide to swing with sticks or gyro, you should pick one and stick with it. <laughs> Stick with it. Um, switching from either after using one type for years will be difficult, so if you're already planning to switch to motion controls, now's the time. 
So the next couple of tips I touched on briefly earlier, but there are some extra in-depth tweets you should give a read. It's mainly on things like special synergy, when to push, communication tips, ink management, and ways to make the game more enjoyable. So pause the video if you need to. Alrighty, well that wraps up Volume 1 to a Splatlandian's Guide to Splatoon. I sure hope you learned something useful in this guide, but be on the lookout for Volume 2's release which will likely cover the hidden secrets of story mode, collectibles, and more. So don't forget to sub the channel to get notified when that gets published. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching till the end of the video and for 20k! Well, until next time, Poofu, offline. <laughs>